Here's a new set of earthworks. Reasonably new. Plantings are just being covered now with cover crop. Trees are mulched and planted. And it's all starting to emerge. It's been well planted straight after earthworks. Sets of dams and swells successively going downhill. Bottom dam has got terraces all around one side. Specifically used the terraces to harvest clay for the dam wall. An extra wide dam wall for a driveway entrance and there's a lot of mud and soil come out of the valley at the bottom dam. So that was brought back, surplus good topsoil material was brought back over the terraces where clay was extracted. So an extraction process, not a cut and fill, but a cut and salvage of clay and then a, a dress of topsoil over the top. So productive terraces next to a very productive dam. Again, finding a resource, then turning the extraction process into a beneficial event, productive terraces. So we have all kinds of systems here, and this is emerging into a brand new property that's gonna really be a very, very fertile and productive place. Here we are on a brand new swale. It's really not very old. We've got summer cover crop just finishing and we've got the plants in position. It's not very old at all. Summer cover crop has been established and it's going into winter. So winter cover crop started to come in now. That's been planted. We've got fruit trees mulched all the way through with support species. And his sweet potato is the perennial cover crop that's gonna come over and give it that grand cover in the end. So you've got a very well marked out swell here and it goes through from connection to connection and here we come to a crossing pipe. So there's a crossing pipe connection on a swell where a track goes right over the swell. All quite new and quite raw but it's all got cover and trees and elements in position that's gonna take it through into a very stable perennial food forest type planting. Okay, so this well is planted to food forest but also hangover forage. You can see the white fence there. So I have the swell interacting with the grazing system. And further down, we have another swell interacting with the grazing system. So the grazing is the intersweat between the two earthworks. So we have not just fruit trees, not just support species, but actually hangover forage crop planted. So we're gonna be a benefit here to not just food of fruit trees, but food of animals. So here we have a valley with four dams through it. The top dam up there, which is that green triangle connected to that level line of growth there being the top swell, comes right the way round the landscape, picks up the nutrient off the forested mountain. That goes right around, also picks up the runoff from the driveway road, overflows into the second dam down, which is just above this one, and then on down into this dam, which is connected to the swell just over this way. The overflow then goes to a dam below us. There, there's also a pickup swell that adds to the catchment, and then eventually that goes under the road to the property next door. Now, if we own that, we'd start putting in fish ponds on that landscape there, because that is just ideal as it goes down flatter and flatter down through the bottom of the valley. These are our terraces. These were, these were actually put in to get clay to build the dam wall. But the reason we didn't have enough clay, there was a valley that was just full of eroded soil and mud. That was put back onto the terraces. These mounds were all made out of that beautiful soil that was at the bottom of the valley. The clay's been taken out to build the wall. And we've got a result here that is so productive, this little area will probably provide all the food for the, local, for the family on the farm. And yet we've got all the swells, all the interswells, and all the rest of the landscape to actually produce a surplus for the economy. This is just six months old. The earthworks were put in six or seven months ago. 
and that's the type of growth we can expect. It's starting to get total cover as the sweet potato starts to completely cover the ground. We've got cassava root crop, bananas, and multiple varieties of fruit tree, quite a lot of comfrey, arrowroot. There's a whole mixture of diversity of plants here, and it's quite a beautiful little system. It was actually an eroded side of the valley. It was a little bit eroded, so when we look for the clay, we realized that we could fix up the erosion, get the clay we needed for the wall, and end up with a beautiful productive set of terraces. So there's obviously a bit of production already going on. The sweet potatoes are bulging out of the soil. They're only six or seven months old. Now here is a grain cover, but they've got a byproduct of root crop. You can see that right there. We've got a lovely little dam and we've built a little island for wildlife habitat. That's a really good environmental thing to do. This is the bottom dam in the system on this particular valley. And we put a very strong spillway in there with big strong crossing pipes and a top spillway over the road. So we've really secured this. Any average rain, even large rains will go through the pipes, but if we get the massive 100 year flood, it's got an escape over the top of the road. These are pipes for a spillway. These are large spillway pipes. They're well rocked in and concreted in position. And if they get to full capacity in something like a 100 year flood, there's a dip in the road above, because this is a road crossing here, crossing the dam wall. There's a dip spillway, a conventional spillway above, and the water goes over the top with no problem. You have to be careful, pipes get to a full capacity and then water tries to get past the outside of the pipe and erodes it away. But if you've got a dip up on the top, it goes over the top and you've got no problem at all. This is security planning for spillway overflows. This situation is completely guaranteed. So this is the solar aspect. We have a sun trap of bamboo planted around the top. Each terrace drains very slowly towards dams. There's a dam just here. The next terrace trips down and feeds down to the dam at the bottom. Each one's got very subtle levels. So the levels come down in the landscape, all gaining reflected light off the water. And then the water just slowly zigzags from dam to terrace to terrace to dam all the way through. It's a real fun game of slowing the water down so that it has time to soak in and create production in the landscape. Considering this is six to seven months old, you've got to admit there's a lot going on. Come back in a year's time, which we probably will, and see this on film. Come back in two years time, you won't believe it's the same place. That's for sure. So these terraces are gonna be encapsulated by this bamboo, this wall of bamboo coming right round in a half circle, all the way round to the middle dam. It's gonna be like a, a big arc, a sun track of reflected light off the dams and reflected light off the bamboo, a completely sheltered little microclimate of productivity right here. These are gonna go 10 to 15 meters high. They're gonna to join together they're going to really stabilize this whole slope and create this as an extremely fertile sheltered little pocket. And the thermal mass of that water below is going to give off lots and lots of heat because water affects 20 times its volume of air above it. So in summer it will be a little bit cooler in the dry hot periods. In winter it's going to be a little bit warmer. So you're going to get a moderated sheltered productive set of terraces here. What was a problem, an eroded slope, became an area we scavenged clay, came up with a creative solution and ended up in an extremely fertile, productive situation. This is a, a swivel pipe and we turn it down or leave it off like this. It just trickles surplus water over here and takes the pressure off the swell. If we put an elbow on here, we can turn it up and it becomes a swivel pipe. Now just over this way, if we walk just over here, we have the level sill itself. That's the level sill that discharges the water out of the swale. Once the water gets up to that height, once it's up to there, it then hits this level surface 
and because it's so long and level, it takes all the energy out of the water and passively overflows it down the slope there to the next dam. Now over here, we have a track crossing the swale and underneath the track, we have a crossing pipe. So there's a crossing pipe here. It's also got an irrigation pipe running through it, but that's quite common. So this crossing pipe goes under the track and this is a crossing over the swale. So it's just a filled in section as high as the mound or even a bit higher. The swale on this side and the swale on the other side, just over here. So we have people mulching the, the fruit trees. There are workers here who are employed on this site. So we actually have permaculture people here working on site, making sure all the trees are mulched, cutting the cover crop, making sure everything's going in the right direction because the growth rate is so potentially high, we can afford to employ people because the production is going to be so good. Here we go, there's a, there's another large swivel pipe. If we want to let the water go out the swell, we can either just pull that off or we can tilt it down and get the level we want. We can adjust the levels and get it full or let it go. Now, swivel pipes just allow you to let the water go if you don't want to hold it and soak it. All quite new plannings, all done at the same time. Beautiful ground cover on that dam wall there. Sweet potato taking the whole thing out of any erosion. This is all very new. It's six to seven months old since it was put in. Little top dam here. The top of four dams in this valley. This is what we call a key point dam. It's the key point that starts the key line and the key line system is where you use the yeoman's plough from this point down. We've got contour swales coming to this point and in between we can key line to rehydrate the landscape and recondition the soils to get good structure. But here we have the tree systems up on these long swale soakages. So here, just seven months ago, there was no water at all. You can see it in transition. This is a landscape which is now potentially extremely abundant. We've followed the patterns of nature. We've followed the system of the landscape's form. We've soaked the water. We've put windbreaks in. They're emerging there on the ridgeline to shelter the flat country on the other side and create microclimates in the valleys here. This is all something you can understand as a permaculture designer. And then you can have incredibly creative fun. This is something that you can feel very meaningful about. This is something very much worthwhile achieving. Not just for yourself, but for the people you're designing for and for the larger environment itself. It's okay to have fun creating these wonderfully patterned earth repair systems. So we have the national park up above this property and we have the forest and the top of the landscape. And we've planted more forest on the steep slopes so there's 2,000 trees been put on these steep slopes, these upper slopes. The trickle down nutrient from the forest comes down the valleys, gets stopped and soaked by the swells. The overflow goes through the dams and then is spread through four dams on this valley and four dams on that valley, all back flooding and feeding swells that give us productivity through the landscape. This is the, just the beginning of mainframe planning. This is going to go on and on and on from here into permanent productivity. We're looking here at a laneway. This is a cattle laneway, so the areas in between the swells can be grazed where it's grazing country, and it's ideal 
to cycle the animals as a rangeland management system. All of this fits together. We've got key line, yeoman's plough, rangeland management, compost, compost tea, food forest, they all fit into the larger permaculture pattern system which begins with well-planned earthworks. <laughs> yeah, so, so. It's beautiful to look at like that. I can really see what that's going to look like in the next few years. I can see the forest, I can see the water flowing, I can see the whole thing coming up in richness. This is a wealthy environment to live in in the future, that's for sure. You feel pretty secure living here, looking at that and its potential and what's going to emerge. This property was developed by a student of mine, all in one earthwork session. You should be able to do this following the permaculture design certificate course information. You should be able to install these sort of earthworks and get a property really fertile and rehydrated. <laughs>